Stand by. Second and final heat of event five is underway. Royce Dunn has the time to beat. 12.01.53 seconds. There are 10 scored reps per round. The rope will be four, the ski will be five, and then the carry is one. This is really all about the rope climb. 16 20 foot rope climbs. And watch Brent Fikowski's technique. He won't even jump, but he wraps his feet and then he pulls his heels immediately underneath his hips to help anchor his feet and turn what we said is a big pulling movement into a leg driven movement. So he's going to be able to save his arms for something that's even more important, which is that 500 meter ski. The mad dash of the skier is just about everybody done at the same time. Justin Medeiros and Saxon Panchik were two of the first. Now, nine reps at the top of your screen. That's what they need to hit before they move on to the sandbag carry. There is Jason Smith, 37 years old out of South Africa. He's the oldest competitor here in the men's field. It's really kind of ruining all my excuses at the moment for not being able to compete at this level at <laughs> 37 years old. <laughs> there is Justin Medeiros, second overall coming into this event, just nine points back of Brent Fakowski. The better you do in an event, the more points you receive. You win an event, you get 100. Second place worth 97, and then third worth 94, and then we get fewer points as we work our way down the standings in an event. And it's Brent Fakowski, a Canadian, who is your overall leader, but right now in this event, it's Sam Corlier who is your leader, and I talked to one of the people who knows him very well this morning, and he told me that Sam has been licking his chops to get at this event. The thing is, we didn't really know what the event details specifically were coming in. We just kind of had a, uh, <laughs> we had a little bit of a preview of what it was of this classic triplet as it was discussed in, in an <laughs> announcement, but there's a big difference between round four or round one and round four. And what it is, is it's the extra five feet on the rope. We thought it was going to be 15. Sandbag, we assume is going to be 150. It's 200 and it's that Husafel shape on the sandbag. So a lot of unique little, again, CrossFit games upgrades for this triplet. Sam Corre is your leader. It is 10th last year at the games as Alex Vino and Jason Hopper, who is so impressive as a rookie at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, won that event to qualify here in the games. And we have been waiting for him to make some noise. And now he is starting to here after the first round of this fifth event. Uh, it's a key, key phrase right at the end of that sentence is after the first round. We'll see what happens on the next three because we still have 12 rope climbs to go. 12 rope climbs was the most we've seen at the CrossFit Games up until this point. Now we have 16. The thing I like about Jason Hopper when you saw him at the MAC is the MAC programming was very, I would say, robust, regional style cross classic programming. Nothing really outside the box because of the venue we're at. This is one of those style events. In day one, it's game style. We're getting outside, we're getting in the water, we're doing a sprint, we're doing something odd object heavy that we don't need, normally get to do at a semifinal or in your home gym. So this is an event that Hopper may finally get to showcase what he's bringing to the table. Pat Felder and Yonikowski were two of the first men to the ski. Koski was your overall leader after the first two events and then surrendered the leader's jersey officially to Brett Fikowski after event three. And then Fikowski has maintained that and looking to hang on, but it is close again at the top of the overall leaderboard. Only 15 points separate Fikowski from fourth place, Jordan Gubinson. And Pat Velder, who started the competition in 35th overall, has worked his way up to fifth, and right now is your leader in this second of four rounds. 12.01.53 seconds is the time to beat. And Pat Velder just cannot keep from digging himself an early hole at the games and trying to climb out of it. I don't know. I, I think Vilner got that 35th place in event one. He goes, perfect. Right where I want him. <laughs> it's all going according to plan. 19 repetitions. That's what we're looking to hit here before we can move on to the sandbag. Pat Vilner on the right. He's your leader right now. Jason Hopper on the left. He was your leader after round number one. 
And for Jason Hopper, like, what's happening? You know, is it games jitters? Is it rookie, you know, eye-opening experiences? Like, listen, this guy took it to a stacked field there at the MAC, and he did it with dominating fashion. So it's not like the guy somehow found his way to the CrossFit Games on accident. He just has yet to be able to showcase what he's capable of after day number one. Brent Fakowski, meanwhile, has crept up on Velder and Hopper. And Pat Velder is off first. Jason Hopper right behind him. Pat Velder in fifth place overall. He is 19 points back of Jorba Gumacin for fourth. Velder is done way ahead of Hopper on the sandbag carry. And Velder working his way back to the rope. Fakowski is now sort of in the middle of the pack. Velder first back to the rope climbs. Velder's already got one rope climb in the bag as the rest of the field gets to it. And the question is where to push in the round and where to really push throughout the event. And it is here on the rope climbs because they're high. They're the most taxing movement we have in this triplet. And so to really put all your intensity in here, because if you can limit your time in between reps, you can ski at a 10 second slower pace and be almost totally fine going into the second or into that stone carry. Jorben Carl Gumitsen is struggling in this event right now. He's in 11th place overall. We mentioned that Velder only trails him by 19 points. The difference between 11th and first is 30. But Velder can erase that in one event. Pat Velder continues to lead. 29 reps. That's what he needs to hit. And then he will move back to the sandbag. Trying to hold off Jodokowski, Scott Panzik, Heinrich Hoppelainen, and Brett Fakowski. Jason Hopper is also in that mix. It is close right now for the lead. And this is the big round, the round that turns the tide when you think about a four-round event. It's the hardest one to keep your met, your mind in the game, to stay, keep your composure because you just got halfway. You have a whole nother round after this. You got to make sure that you keep the intensity going, not fully down just yet because you do have to save something for the end. Pat Vellner continuing to lead here in round three of four. He is on the right of your screen. Vellner once again started off with that 35th fifth place finish in the opening event. Since then, he's got first, third, and seventh, looking for his second event win of this competition and maybe trying to put himself in the top three. Mikowski's put a lot more intensity into this ski. He's on the left side of your screen in the leader jersey. And I know that because he just skied the sunglasses off about halfway through. So Fakowski may be trying to make a move here in the middle of the third round. Pat Velder just about done. Fakowski is on his final 100, as is Yonikowski in the middle of your screen. Velder is finished, and he is the first man off. So he is leaving Jason Hopper, who has been challenging him on the last couple of rounds, well behind him. Velder will get to the sandbag before anyone else is even off the ski. And here comes Brent Fakowski. And he's much closer to Vellner after the third round than he was after the second. The question is, how much does he have left for the final round? Bukowski has the bag down. He's still in second. Koski and Maderos have both picked up their sandbags. They are moving from left to right on your screen. Koski closest to the camera. Maderos just dropping off his sandbag. Vellner is back on the rope. But Fikowski is ahead of the two men directly behind him in the overall leaderboard. So looking to keep those guys in his wake. But Pat Velder is looking to gain some ground on the top four men in the overall standings. He's got one rope climb on Fikowski. Now what Fikowski is doing is he's cycling a hair faster than Velner is. And watch Fikowski on his descent. He'll keep his hands on the rope and go right back into it. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. 
Guys, during a competition, Brent Fikowski is known for going radio silent, but I was able to uh, email back and forth with his wife, Claire, yesterday to find out how he spent the rest day. Like most athletes, he got a massage and lots of sleep, but Brent also spent time in a sensory deprivation chamber. I asked her why. Well, as we all know, Brent is exceptionally analytical, and this is the only way that he can turn his brain off, which is what he needs to recover. So if he keeps that white jersey on, he might be back in the tank tonight. Well, if he wants to keep that white jersey, he has to push the last 500 meters of this ski. You're not going to put yourself in a bad position to not be able to carry that stone the last 42 feet. It's all going to come down to this last 500 meters. 1201.53. That is the time to beat Royce Dunn that did that in heat number one. Pat Veller and Brent Fakowski fighting for the lead right now in this final heat. Heinrich Hapalainen got to the ski about the same time as Brent Fakowski, maybe a little bit ahead of him. Hapalainen, a rookie out of Helsinki, Finland. Velder with inside 300 meters to go on his ski. 39, that's the reps he's got to hit on the top of your screen. Hapalainen, 15th overall coming into this event. Ski at the end is just brutal. It's just a brutal piece of equipment to begin with. But after 16 rope climbs, 1,500 meters of skiing up to this point, there's not a lot left in the arms, which is why you see these athletes just driving their chest into the ground as hard as they can with their arms straight and as reached up as possible to get anything they have left out of their bodies. Velder inside 100 meters now, as is Brent Fikowski. Madero's Hapalina and Koski fighting for third. 1201.53, that's the time to beat. Felder's off. Felder to the sandbag for the final time. Here comes Brent Fakowski. And Pat Felder will pick up his second event win. And someone's climbed out of the hole. Jackson Madero's just got to the sandbag. Brent Fakowski is in. Madero's will not be able to pick up points on Fakowski. Madero's will come in in third. Heinrich Hapalainen looking to pass Yonikowski. And Hapalainen is in just ahead. So a race between two fins there. As Scott Panchik came across. Sixth in the heat, seventh in the event for Panchik. Saxon Panchik is in. Now here comes Alex Vino. Bjorben Carl Gumitsen is in. Gumitsen will finish in 11th in the event. Vellner will leapfrog him in the overall standings. Here's Alex Vino and Jason Smith on the left of your screen getting to his sandbag. Meanwhile, oh, Jason Hopper. Look at that. Is way in the back. Maiden Brown, Andre Houdet, Smith, and Noah Olson have all finished. Noah Olson, 15th in the heat, 23rd in the event. So the wheels came off for Jason Hopper. A little too soon, Junior. Round number one. Way too hot. I and mean, when you think about rope climbs specifically, you can blow yourself up to keep yourself from climbing a rope because it's grip intensive, it's pull intensive. And if you come out with much, way too much intensity in round number one, which clearly happened to Hopper, that's rookie stuff, right? That's that's things you see from, from new guys. Gima Harris, Crouch, Cornoyer, who yep. thought he would do well in this event, just came in. He finished 28th in the event as Jason Hopper is struggling with the sandbag. And Hopper, Hopper just doesn't have anything left in his arms. He is the last man on the field, and he is struggling with this sandbag. One minute to go before we hit the time cap. The crowd trying to get behind Jason Hopper and help him across the finish line. And Hopper topples over and will finish 
in 33rd place in this event. But it's Pat Velder who picks up his second event win in the competition.